here's the sawmill. It's a mighty mite and sawmill. So Mark III. It's an older one. Um, I've replaced the hydraulic cylinder on that. That's for the blade tension and rebuilt the hydraulic motor up there a couple different times. Uh, just put new bearings in here on the take up and a new shaft not too long ago. We got uh, these rollers that the carriage roids on. I replaced the bearings in those both sides. Replace this pump over here. That's the drive motor pump. Um, yeah. When I first got it, I uh, had to replace the, the bearings. Oh, I put a new, new uh, V belt uh, pulley on the hydraulic motor. And I also put a new coil on there. That it was before it'd start cold and it'd run pretty good and then it'd start missing and, and uh, running poorly but then uh, when you'd shut it off when it got hot you couldn't get it started again and uh, so one side of the coil was going bad and uh, I replaced the coil and, and it runs pretty good now. And see replaced um, these bearings in the head stock, the head wheel, and uh, when I got it, it had uh, pulleys on here for uh, two inch band blades. It was originally sold and run with two inch band blades, and when I, I replaced that shaft on the drive on the head end and the bearings, and I went ahead and got new pulleys, uh, new drive wheels, and I've got them set up to run uh, inch and a quarter blades, inch and a half blades, and uh, the guides, uh, roller guides, I got new roller guides and installed on there at the same time. Uh, the pulley over there on, or the wheel, uh, idler wheel on that side, when I went, re I re got the machine, it wouldn't cut worth crap, and uh, this uh, bearings on this side were bad. When I took it out, the shaft was was foobarred from running in the bad bearings and there was a lot of you could grab onto this and you could wiggle it and then you can't it's I've run it now for 10 years with these bearings on grease them frequently regularly and and it works pretty good but uh, that wheel on that side was cracked the hub was cracked the guys that uh, I don't know whether they changed the bearings or what I think they had must have changed the bearings but it's because uh, when the bearings went bad on it here a couple years ago and I replaced those the shaft was was pretty bad they would put the run the old shaft in there and on the old bearings and when they put it back together they put the old shaft back in and it was it was pretty bad so I had to put the shaft on that side but when they put it together I think they uh, over tightened the hub or something and they'd crack that wheel on that side the, the drive idler wheel so I replaced the wheels um, Put a new uh, pulleys on it um, for uh, running an inch and a half or inch and a quarter blades, which is what was recommended to me for this mill. Um, kind of overdo it quite a bit on here, and uh, these cross members here. You can see them here. There were two. There were two just like it on the front two there, and they take the biggest load because that's where the logs bang onto, and, and those got bent pretty bad, and. Uh, so we cut those out of there and replaced them with a couple of heavier channel iron uh, cross members and we just did that this winter. I had uh, friend Kevin do that. He welded them in, cut them in, put them in. Um, otherwise the machine is pretty good. I replaced that drive chain for the travel here a couple of years ago. Um, it sits out in the weather of course and everything gets uh, gets rusty and doesn't get used as regularly as sometimes it get used a lot for a while and it's not for a long time. That's a piece of yellow cedar um, stick we just stuck on put on there and I'm gonna mill it up uh, into lumber for 
new deck on my um, trailer for launching the float plane. That's a longer mill. That's uh, long enough to cut a 20 foot, 20 foot timber or 20 foot board on that mill. I've got the carriage uh, rocked ahead just a little bit now. I just uh, finished um, setting it up. Uh, I, I moved the mill and built that uh, planks that it's on there, the uh, six by tens, I guess they are, and then uh, ties underneath. And uh, we went out last year and got a bunch of rock and sand there, used to tamp it up to bed it in, and then I just uh, just uh, tied the mill down to it. I just put lag bolts in it, and I had uh, there was some holes already drilled in there that somebody had an adjustments on it, and I just uh, took the adjustments out and lag bolted it down. But that's uh, level and straight. Now we still have to put the clamps on. Um, we had the whole table off of that when we replaced those two cross members in front there, those new beams, and, uh, and so we've still got to put the the clamps on. Um, for the lumber clamps. Uh, here's a, my pile of yellow cedar um, and I just drug these two logs down off of it. Uh, I guess you can kind of get a comparison to how what size they are by looking at those two fifty or that 50 gallon drum there. Um, I think those are uh, probably 20 feet. They might be only 16 feet long. But they're about uh, oh, 20, 25 inches, 28 inches in diameter on the big end. And that one there's got some pretty good taper to it. Got big knots and some pretty good taper to it. So it's probably about 20, 20 inches or so on the tall end. And uh, on the small, on the big end there, it's about. Uh, Oh, 25, 28 inches, and that other one is about 28 inches on that end, and and maybe 30 inches on that end, and probably pretty close to that on that end. Uh, I've got some pretty nice logs there in that that pile. Uh, that pile's all yellow cedar. That's what we showed in some of the other videos, uh, skidding out and hauling out. Um, and then, uh, and I've got. So various logs over in that side, that's some stuff that was blow down in the neighbors, that's some spruce, and it's a couple of nice little hemlock logs there. Uh, and then uh, that pile up there by the house, that is my hemlock, my firewood. And uh, I've got three logs left there, that's spruce, that came from the neighbors over the hill here, we've dumped those down. and. Pulled them out into the salt water and then pulled them around and pulled them out on another road. And uh, I got through, I had uh, four or five of those. I milled up a bunch of them last year for Mike Baker for his house down the Narrows. And then I just milled up a couple um, about a month ago for shelves in the hangar. And uh, and that pile over there is some mixed stuff. There's some spruce in there and some red cedar in there. Um, I'm going to do something with those. And, that's my dry pile there, drying shed. And this side over here was yellow cedar. We took a lot of that out last year, milled up for the house and for the greenhouse. And we've got some salvaged plywood and stuff stacked, stickered in there underneath it. And, uh, and then the middle has got a lot of the yellow cedar has moved over into the lower part of the middle there. And then the top part is mostly spruce, one buys. And the third row over there on the other side, the top is uh, red cedar. And then underneath it is some uh, spruce two by stock. But, uh, that's it. That's the mill setup. And tomorrow I'm going to start cutting cutting lumber. I'll cut some uh, um, timbers out of that. Probably I have to get the uh, trailer down here and figure out. But I need some uh, uh, six by six or four by six or something to go across the the trailer to bolt down to the aluminum and then. Then I'll cut uh, two by twelves out of the the bigger ones there, make a deck on it, and uh, we'll be ready to launch the airplane once we get the that all figured out. So, and that uh, that's all yellow cedar siding that we cut on the sawmill. That's the lap siding. It's uh, eight inch lap, and it's uh, 
got a four inch reveal on it and uh, it, it's kind of thin but it's uh, it's pretty nice and then uh, yellow cedar it's all yellow cedar on the outside of the house there the, the um, water table board down there and uh, corner boards yellow cedar I still got a lot of work to do on that but I've got too much other stuff to do to put any time into it and then I've got some spruce spruce logs over here they're too big to go on that mill I have to get uh, circle saw milling to get to get those um, and I've just haven't had time to get it going but got uh, two logs there that are close to 50 inches and, uh, and the other ones are smaller than that but uh, anyway so I've got some milling to do yeah, we've done quite a bit of it. Uh, of course, that shed was that was built with the chainsaw mill lumber. The outside of it is on that one. The sheeting on it, uh, the board and batten, was the first lumber that I cut on the bandsaw mill. And the stuff on the other shed over there, the smaller one, that was cut with the chainsaw mill. That's all uh, hemlock. And uh, down below it, there is the utility pole stand that uh, was all cut on the uh, band mill that's yellow cedar um, four by or six by sixes and four by sixes and, and uh, two bys on the thing and then red cedar I even cut the red she cedar shingles on the bandsaw mill um, and then of course you can't see any of the lumber on the hanger here, but that was all cut on the bandsaw mill. One by two by sixes, two by eights. All homegrown stuff. Well, we got some work to do tomorrow. Get the plane going so we can get it out of the way for the season. And get ready to start the season with it, and then I can start working on some other stuff.